everyone. So I'm here today with my giant hat, which I actually think I'm getting more used to now, at least like looks wise when I see myself, but I am still running into door frames and walls because I'm not used to the diameter of this hat, but great for sun protection. So what I wanted to do today was talk to you about something that I'm doing, that I've been doing, that I've mentioned on Instagram a few times, but I don't think I've ever mentioned here before. I'm not sure, but that is that I'm getting my horticulture certificate. So I started last spring and I'm going to be certified probably end of next year, but I figured I'd tell you like what it is, the program I'm doing. And then if you have any other questions about it, let me know down below, but I'll start with like the basics of the program. So I knew I wanted to take some sort of classes on horticulture and I didn't know if I wanted to do the master gardener route or if I wanted to do some I don't know courses through like the Chicago, Chicago Botanic Garden I looked up but what I settled on was getting the horticulture certificate through the University of Illinois and there are other universities that offer this I took a home horticulture just one class through I think it was University of Oregon but I figured it would make more sense to take classes through the school that was closest to me so that we're in the same environment for talking about plants and how this works so I actually have the website pulled up here because they do offer a few different classes or a few different certificates so here are the certificates that you can get through the University of Illinois um, cannabis production and management horticulture which is what I'm doing small farm small farm manager crop sciences professional development horticulture professional development which I don't know the difference between like how I would use the certificate I'm getting versus that one, but my horticulture certificate is cheaper because it's the undergraduate hours and not graduate hours, um, but that's going too far into the weeds. Uh, they have urban agriculture professional development, and I think that is the last one that they have. So I am taking classes all online. The requirements for me to get my certificate are, here's what it says on the site. I have to complete 12 hours um, from a list of classes under the Crop Sciences Horticulture Department. Uh, two of the courses are at the 100, 200, 300 level. So two courses for 100, 200, 300. And then I have to complete six hours at the 400 level. And I think most of the classes are three credit hours. So that's basically two courses at the 400 level, which is four courses total. So I signed up for two courses this spring, even though when I was speaking with the head of the program, who is great by the way, I recommended only taking one if you know you are also working and you're not just a full-time student. And I was like, no, I can do two. Um, then I quickly realized, no, I can't. There's only time for one. So I did one in the spring semester 2023. I'm doing one, which is actually starting now for fall 2023. I'll do one next spring and one next fall. So in four semesters or two years, I'll be done with my certificate. If you had more time or you were just better at allocating your time, you could do it in one year. I don't think they offer four classes that would fit the requirements all in one semester. So I think you would have to break it up into two semesters so you could get it in one year or like I am if you take one class a semester, it's done in two years. So even though it's through the University of Illinois, which is based in is it Urbana Champagne? Um, I'm doing everything online, but the classes that I'm taking are the same classes that I would take if I was an undergraduate or graduate student, depending on the level. So I am in classes with people that are almost 20 years younger than me, which is very different. Um, also, college is very different than, so I graduated undergrad in 2008, grad school in 2010, and I don't think I brought a laptop to class and now like everything is done online. So that is very different from when I was in school um, just a couple decades ago. So it's been interesting, but I've always really loved school. So why I wanted to do this was, you know, I really do love gardening. It's a passion of mine, but I also want to know everything that I can about it. So I like taking free classes, but I thought this would be a really good way to have a structured class. Like had I majored in this when I was younger, I think I really would have enjoyed it. That's something I'm realizing now. Not that I didn't love my marketing degree that I got um, or the MBA classes that I took, but I was taking those classes or I chose those majors or those programs because that's what I felt like I should do. Like get a business degree, then you can find a job easily. Um, get your MBA because then, I don't know, you can find a better job. But I really didn't figure out what my passion was until 
my early to mid 30s so I'm 37 now and I used to always have the idea too that I was always too late to do something and luckily I got that out of my brain so that is why I am doing this now if I could go back I wish I had majored in something related to agriculture but I don't even know if I was actually passionate about it back in you know my late teens early 20s so everything I think works out at the right time for the right reasons so that's just basically why I'm doing this now so I'm hoping that through the certification program I just learn a lot more about the science behind plants um, the class I'm taking this semester is all about native planting and planting throughout the seasons and garden design so I'm just gonna learn more about what I'm already doing and just become a better gardener overall I don't know if I would ever want to use this professionally in any way but it's nice to be able to have the certificate so that in case I ever do then I have that and either way I'm going to use the knowledge that I gain through just my garden in general and helping friends in their garden so the class I took in the spring semester was like the introduction horticulture 100 class and I was going into it and I was wondering would I know everything already and it was kind of gonna seem like a waste or would I know nothing and I would wonder what I've been doing these last few years in the garden and it was a very good mix of both so there was a lot that I already knew and understood and I also learned a lot um, because again everything I'm doing is self-taught so I will look up online if I have any questions or snap a photo if I'm wondering what that is on my plant but it's nice to have this structure I think I really learn better that way when there is kind of a structure laid out and you're teaching this before you're teaching this before you're teaching this instead of just looking up random questions that I have while I'm in the garden. So it's been a really nice setup, I think, for how I learn. Um, I will say one thing I do miss being in class, like as much as I'm a person who works from home, I was always a person who preferred like individual projects versus team projects, but I do miss being in a classroom, especially with some of the exercises from the Hort 100 class that I took. A lot of it was like going into the lab and looking at plant tissues and that wasn't something I was able to do. Um, they would post the photos or videos online for us to watch and also just making connections with your classmates. Although I don't know how many connections I would make with 18 to 22 year olds. But either way, that's the only thing that I kind of wish I was able to find something more local where I could go into a classroom, but I know the Chicago Botanic Garden offers a lot of one-off classes, so that could be something that I choose to do in the future. So the class that I'm taking this semester, which is just starting, I'm really excited about. I wasn't sure if I was going to be excited about it. So basically, the class is called Planting, Biodiversity, and Aesthetics. And I'll quickly just go over kind of what it's going to cover. Also, if you think it'd be interesting for me to share the things that I learn maybe in like a weekly or bi-weekly little quick update, let me know. Um, but here is kind of the objectives of this class. So identifying plant species, um, both with their common and scientific names, which is something I know I need to work on. Um, understanding the cultural needs for growth in the landscape, learning about your insect audience, pollinators and beneficial insects and how to attract them, how to learn to accommodate both groups, so planting plants that are pleasing to humans but also pleasing to the pollinators, which I think is a good balance, um, developing the plant design and graphic representation skills, and then practicing visually communicating your plant designs as a formal landscape plan. So why I wasn't sure if I would like this is that I'm a person who, at least in the garden, doesn't do a great job of planning ahead, or even if I do, I ignore all the plans I made anyway uh, and just throw the plants wherever I want them. But I think this is gonna be good to challenge me. And I'm expecting because it's not something that kind of comes natural to me that I'm going to learn a lot. We also had a very brief course during the last Proven Winners Creators event where we did a little bit like I think it was maybe an hour-long presentation on garden design and now I'm taking a whole class on that so I'm gonna be able to learn how to draw out all of these plans and I think it'll just be a really useful skill because I am getting more friends asking me for help with their garden again I don't see myself ever being a professional landscaper but I also never saw myself posting videos on the internet in my garden so who knows where the future is going to take you. Um, but at least right now, I don't have like professional plans for that, but I do think it would be nice to learn how to draw all of the garden plans that I might want to make. And I don't know exactly what all the exercises in this course are going to entail, but I think it would be really cool to kind of do a redesign of my own garden, at least one of the decks. 
and see how it would be different after I learn everything that I'm gonna learn in this class. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else or any common questions that I've been getting um, when I've mentioned on Instagram. Definitely let me know if you have any questions down below or if you've done this. I know one question is, is this the same as becoming a master gardener? And it's not. So I won't be able to call myself a master gardener after I'm done with my four classes. I will be able to say that I'm a certified horticulturalist or I have my horticulture certificate. So that will be nice. Um, I did ask the professor of my last class if it'd be worth like getting the master gardener um, course done as well. And she said, probably not in terms of me learning anything new. Like I probably won't learn. Basically, I think she's going to say everything that I've learned, especially in Hort 100, which was 16 weeks of all just introduction to horticulture. A lot of that would basically be the same as in a master gardener class. There might be a little bit um, more specific to like the Chicago area than just Illinois in general, but she didn't think it would be worth it to actually take the class. But she did say I could reach out to them for potentially getting involved in some of the volunteer opportunities because when you are going for your master gardener certification, you do have to do some volunteer hours. So that might be something I do at some point. I'm not sure. And I don't know. I mean, I think I'm fine if I can't say I'm a master gardener. Maybe I'd want to do it at some point. I don't know. I think once I'm done with these horticulture classes, um, I'll kind of then just take more classes in the future around certain areas that I want to learn more about. So I don't know, but it's not necessary. And no, by doing this, I'm not going to be a master gardener. I know I already mentioned this, but everything I'm doing is online and it's also on my own schedule for the most part. Basically the lessons will be released on a certain day. You have a week to complete all of the reading, all of the exercises um, before the deadline, which is usually again about a week time period. So I'm able to do them on my own schedule, which is nice, at least the two classes so far. I know that there are some where you'll have like an hour lecture that you attend online, like a Zoom webinar once a week, but I haven't taken any of those classes yet. But it is really easy, I feel like, to kind of fit around my schedule of when I'm able to do the coursework and when, you know, I'm doing my actual work. So it's been really nice. Um, the professor I've had, the same one for both, she's incredibly knowledgeable. So that's been really fun as well. I've attended some of the, oh, what are they called? I've forgotten because it's been so long. Not teaching hours. What is it called? Office hours? I think it is called office hours. Oh my gosh, you can see how long I've been out of school. I also always loved school. So it wasn't like a hard decision for me to wonder if I should go back or not. Um, downsides, I will say it is expensive because college courses are expensive. So I'm paying the same of like an hourly college credit course. It's not any different taking the certification, but that is what I was mentioning earlier is so they offer both the horticulture certificate and then the horticulture professional development certificate and the director of the program just basically said if you do the professional development you're a grad student and you're paying the grad student hours which is more expensive than undergrad so with the horticulture certificate i am paying a little bit less per credit hour um also if i ever did want to get my bachelor's degree these classes can be put towards that again i don't think that's something i'm going to need or want to do um, but that is nice to know that that is out there so yeah I'll just kind of see where this path takes me again let me know if you'd like some updates from the things that I learn I'll definitely share them on Instagram but if you think it'd be helpful to kind of put them into a video update especially as we get into winter and there's not as much happening in the garden uh, let me know that too and let me know any other sort of classes that you've taken that you found have been helpful to just learning more about the garden and plants. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.